Moving back. Um, so, Shelby. Yes. For these, some of these people who don't know, can you please explain what exactly they, that it is that you do? Um, I am a voice actress on the show Steven Universe on Cartoon Network. I play Paradox. Awesome. How did you get into the business? Um, I got a book called um, Word of Mouth at a library uh, because I wanted to get into voiceovers and I'm, my brain kind of works more, I need to read things and I need to kind of structure it out for myself, like how to train, what to do, like basically like voiceover 101. Um, so then I called the author of the book. <laughs> I opened up the book and I saw the number and I was like, hi, uh, my name's Shelby, I just picked up your book and uh, I was interested if you taught voiceover class and Sue Blue was like, actually, yes I do. So then I started training with her um, for about over a year, a year and a half. And then I got my voiceover reel together. Um, I worked on getting a bunch of characters together, you know, um, like six to 12 characters. And then I recorded a reel, had a reel professionally done. And then I started submitting to voiceover agents. And then I got signed with an agent that then, that then dropped me. And then I signed, and then I booked Steven Universe and then I got with another agent. So just get a lot of no's until that one, yes. It's a constant grind, yeah. Yeah, constant, yeah, definitely. The floor is open for questions now. A big hustle. Um, uh, the sign Olivia from Sun Network. What about Steven Universe? Like, pops off like the, I guess the scripts for you. Why did it like draw you in? Oh, um, I was attracted to that to that um, script because it was the first time I've I've seen a cartoon with really really strong women, like female characters, like kick ass characters, and. Steven was this character that I just fell in love with. Um, he wasn't victim-y. It wasn't like, oh, poor Steven, you know, without mom and just a dad. I liked that he was just really genuine and authentic and loving and that the relationships with him and the gem, uh, the gems were just very um, truthful and each gem kind of had a role to play in Steven's life without him being victim-y. And that's what I really, really liked. And it was a very, very unique script. Um, I have a question myself. Sure. What parts of you do you see in your character that you play, Peridot? Peridot, yeah. Um, I think the quirkiness of Peridot is definitely Shelby. Um, I think there's parts of, of my humor that uh, are definitely injected into her. Um, I definitely can censor myself more so than Peridot, though. I don't have as many uh, <laughs> emotional outbursts outwardly. I might have them inwardly, but I don't show them. Peridot definitely shows them on her sleeve. Do you ever have any of those like cringe moments? Like, do you ever watch the show and like you're like, oh, I can't look at myself like right now? Because I know as as an actor as well, like sometimes you get those like things on stage or when you're recording, you're like, oh, well, I can't move into that, I can't look right now. I'm so embarrassed. You know, an embarrassment thing for me. I'm actually never embarrassed. Never really. No, no, I don't know what it is because I think while I'm doing it, I think the weirder the better. Actually, really? I like playing roles um, on screen and off screen, or like voices. Um, and a lot of the on screen stuff that I really enjoy playing. I mean, I played a law associate on Goliath for, on Amazon, um, and that was really fun. That was a really nice, like, you know, straight laced law associate. Um, you know, with Billy Bob Thornton and like William Hurt, and I'm sitting there, and it was actually like the most normal I've ever played on screen, and it was really fun. But still, I was very, you know, aware of like my character choices. Um, but I played another character named Heidi on YouTube Red, uh, Rhea Perlman and David Butowski, and Heidi's way out there. And I actually find I really like to stretch the physical comedy. Um, the comedy when I'm not saying anything, the silent comedy. I, I'm a huge fan of I Love Lucy. Um, Mr. Bean, uh, I really enjoy physical comedy, so kind of like the weirder the better for me. So I'm actually never really embarrassed about um, work that I see. I, I don't know if that's weird. <laughs> no, it's, it's not weird. Maybe it's some of my insecurities as an actor. Oh, hey, listen, we ha all have them. Um, uh, with Paradox, I love my little snorts. Like, I'm like, oh, they added that weird snort in, and that's awesome. I only say that because, like, watching your character, sometimes I get embarrassed, like, for the character. So, yeah, no, totally. Some of those awkward situations where it's like, no, you just don't, you don't get the situation right now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> awesome. Uh, questions? Charles from Inspired the Views. I was curious what your experiences were like on being good at Extraordinary Dancers. Oh, oh my gosh, I love it when people ask me about that. Um, I loved playing the dark nurse slash Bella on League of Extraordinary Dancers. Um, I just saw John Chu, the director uh, uh, of it, creator essentially, and um, 
we were reminiscing about that. That was so many years ago, and uh, it was really amazing to play a part in a series where dancers were superheroes. Like, if, if that was made a comic, I think that, well, I, mean, I think we already have like a big fandom, or, or you know, the people that do know about the League of Extraordinary Dancers, I think they're fans of it, but I would love it to come back. Um, I think it, in a comic book form would be really, really cool to see, and um, the experience was just like a dream come true. Uh, not only did I get to dance, which is like my first love, um, but I got to work with so many amazing dancers, like, the best in the world, in my opinion, you know, um, break dancers, um, rope, uh, animatronic dancers like Mad Chad, um, I mean, Kid David, Casper, Luigi, Skills, like, I mean, the amount of like breakers we use, and like, not only were we using ballerinas, you know, people like street dancers, there were, you know, ballroom dancers, so it was just like a dream come true to be like, whoa, this mythology exists with using dancers that aren't like just dancers. So it was an amazing experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More questions? Hi, um, I'm Mia from WrestleFinsBots underscore on Instagram. Awesome. Um, so I have two questions for you. Um, how do you feel the student universe has affected the LGBTQA community? And how do you feel like doing these conventions like, how do you feel like the fans have affected you? Oh my gosh, I, um, well, to answer your first question first, before I go off on a tangent. Um, I think what Rebecca Sugar and the new Steven Kroonverse has been able to do, um, as far as representation on a animated show, has been really groundbreaking um, for the LGBTQIA uh, community. Just, I think representation is so important. Um, these cartoons or animated shows, um, they're not only just for children, but because I think children watch them, um, I think our demographic starts at like six years old, um, I think it's important that these younger, this younger generation is seeing representation on screen, because in, in, in a way, whether or not they're like, oh, that is a, it's not necessarily like, that's a, you know, Ruby and Sapphire, those are two gems that love each other, that have a genuine, truthful relationship. And I think at a young age when you're exposed to that, as you're growing up, you can understand those relationships versus being bullied if you are gay, if you are a part of that LGBTQIA community. Um, they can always refer back to me like, no, well I see Ruby and Sapphire on screen, so it's not weird and I'm not going to feel like the other and it's not wrong. So um, I feel very proud to be on a show like Steven Universe that uh, has that representation on screen, and then also to be a part of such a diverse cast. Um, it's my first experience being in a recording booth. Um, you know, I haven't done that many voiceovers, but even just um, on set, as I like to call it, in the booth on set. And having so many people from so many diverse ethnic backgrounds, um, and from just, just all over, I don't, I no longer feel like the other when I'm working on Steven Universe. On, on, other, on, on other jobs I do, um, I'm like, oh, I'm the only you know, Pacific Islander, Asian American here. Great, you know, and, and it's, now it's weird for me to walk into a situation where I am the other. It's weird now that I'm on, I've been on Steven Universe for such, uh, for, for you know, a couple seasons, it's normal to me, and that's what I'm most excited about. I'm like, nobody's, nobody's the other here, and that's awesome. That's the first time I think I've ever said that in my professional career, actually. Um, as far as being at cons, I love it. I think meeting the fans for me, it makes it real. Um, you know, I get a bunch of uh, social media um, messages which are so sweet, and I like, see all the fan art, um, and it makes my heart like swell up. Like I just feel so special and honored, and hearing people's stories about how Steven Universe has really helped them in their lives um, and like stay strong through, you know, whether it be depression or a relationship. Um, actually physically seeing these people and seeing, like looking at them in their eyes, it's really special for me because sometimes I just think as an actress, a voiceover actress, um, you're like, okay, cool, I'm doing something, I'm, I'm trying to do my best. But then when you're meeting the fans and it, and it crosses that line of, of something really um, personal to them, it makes it personal for me. So I love these cons. It's great. Awesome.
Yes, you. Doug Engler from An Amazing Radio. Who have been some of your inspirations to help you get into acting and voice acting? Oh my goodness, um, I have so many. Um, as far as, let's see, this is a, well, I love Lucille Ball. Um, <laughs> I'll always go back to her. Um, Cause at a young age, I would always watch uh, I Love Lucy and then um, uh, MacGyver with my grandparents. And um, they moved from the Philippines. And so I think a lot of Lucille Ball's physical comedy was like so new to them to see that on television. Um, and just her little nuances, her timing is just like impeccable. Um, impeccable. Um, as far as, uh, you know, female directors go, um, I'm a huge fan of Ava DuVernay. Uh, I um, am starting my own screenwriting path myself, and so I, I actually look to her for a lot of inspiration and, you know, taking a chance and on, on women of color and females behind the camera. Um, so she's one of my uh, people I really, really look up to. Um, Sue Blue, who I trained with, she was the voice of the Pillsbury Doughboy um, back in the day. She was my teacher for voiceovers, and she kind of instilled in me that I can do it. Because, you know, a lot of insecurities, like you were talking about, um, you don't know if you're good enough ever. And so sometimes it just takes this one person to say, hey, you actually really have talent. I think you should just keep going. And so you're kind of like, all right, let's do it. So yeah, and I've had a lot of acting teachers and a lot of my friends um, who are in the business. Obviously, my husband like really, really inspired me to keep going. He's he's like my number one cheerleader. So if people like that didn't exist, I don't think I'd be here and doing what I'm doing. So shout out to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any work that you have coming up or any uh, roles that you have or that you're about to do? that you're really excited for? Um, well, my YouTube Red Show just came out in March, um, and so it's 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 still going. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get a season two, but this, the episodes are out there, and I think they're really, really funny. I love working with Rhea Perlman, um, and the character that I play is super quirky. Um, she's really sarcastic. She's a little bit like along the lines of Janine Garofalo, um, which was new for me to play. So um, I'm excited for people to see that show if you guys are interested. It's on YouTube Red and also Google Play. And there's six episodes and it's called Me and My Grandma. I play Heidi and she's awesome. Yeah, I, I actually, people don't realize it's me until they look my, names up, my name up on the credits because I look really different. Um, my hair's up in all these like crazy buns. I'm wearing glasses. I'm like really accessorized. Um, I got to pick my outfits a lot with a costume designer. So she's uh, very different than, again, it's a part of Shelby, but it's not like Shelby that you see every day. So yeah, that's a project I have coming out. And um, hopefully you'll see some, some other things with me in it as far as um, writing goes. Actually, my next question though, you mentioned screenwriting. Um, yeah. Uh, what is it, what kind of genre do you hope to write for? Uh, right now, um, I'm working on a biopic. Um, yeah, it includes stories that just happen to be from female dancers. It's not about them being dancers. Um, it's just almost like, you know, movies have so much more about the main protagonist other than them just being one aspect. And I feel like uh, a lot of the dance stories that I've seen about female dancers have just been about them being dancers. They, they, I, I want, I'm, I'm delving more into the backstory of... I see. Yeah, of like me myself being a dancer, you know, what it was like growing up being a dancer. I mean, it's hard, it's, it's tough being a dancer. Like I grew up doing ballet, it's, you know, it's, it's not easy and I, I wanna kind of open up and share my point of view as far as um, what that was like. Okay. For right now, but I'm also interested in um, so many other stories I wanna tell, but right now that's what I'm focusing my screenplay on. Have you, have you ever considered directing, maybe? Oh, yes. Um, I'm actually interested in getting, uh, I'm applying to a bunch of um, programs for diversity and directing, um, you know, film independent, Sundance. Um, I applied to the Sundance awesome, uh, yeah. screen, Screenwriting Lab, and hopefully that works out. If it doesn't, that's okay. I'll keep trying, you know. It's hard to get into, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get into, and you just got to keep going. Never give up. So yeah, I'd love to direct. That's that's ultimately ultimately what I would love to do. Same. Yeah, let's do it. I'm trying, yeah. Questions. Charles again. Hi, Charles again. 
I'm curious, as a dancer, do you wish that your character Peridot would dance more in the show? Absolutely. Um, she's done a little bit of like, you know, little little movements here and there. Um, I would love to see Peridot like bust out and like break dancing sort of thing. Or like, I feel like she's definitely more of like the hip hop. You know, Pearl's more of the balletic one. Um, I've gotten to choreograph a scene for Steven Universe. Um, it's actually coming out in the art book this summer, I think. Um, I choreographed uh, Greg and Pearl's dance for Mr. Greg in, um, in that episode. So that was really cool because I, I recorded it at home and then um, I had Harry, my husband, dance with me. I was like, can you do this part with me? And then they animated using that video. So in the art book, they kind of break it down, I think, um, with all of our pictures. And that's how they animated um, the dance between uh, Greg and Pearl. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd love to, to dance more. Oh, and I also foleyed um, when uh, Steve, Steven and Steve. Who calls Steve and Steve? Steve. Steve. When Steven tap dances uh, with Pearl, um, that's actually my tap dancing. So I got to foley. Yeah, I went into the foley studio and took, uh, uh, choreographed it, and then they mic'd me up. And then it was so cool. And then when I heard it, I was like, well, I've always wanted to do that. I, you know, I love happy feet. And I had some friends that worked on Happy Feet. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome that you got to do that. And now I said, I could say that I got to fully tap sounds. That's awesome. Yeah. I was working with like the, uh, I know you might have touched on this, working with like just the other cast, um, the voice actors. Um, um, do they inspire you at all? Oh, absolutely. It, they're, we're all friends outside. We, I, I got a lot of questions yesterday at the panel. Um, are you guys friends outside the show? I'm like, oh yeah, like after cons, like we, we did LA Anime Expo in, in, in LA last weekend, and we all went to Little Tokyo to grab lunch afterwards, and we ended up spending like the whole day together. <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean, the whole cast is super talented. Like yeah. we definitely push each other in the booth. Um, it's, it's not like, okay, like, do that one again. It's more like we hear them do it and we're giggling like half of the time. we're having to cover our mouth because we're cracking up so hard. <laughs> like, especially Michaela, like her noises are amazing. She was just before you were, by the way. Oh, she was? She okay, was, so yeah. you guys, go, you guys yeah. get it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's hilarious. Um, and like Dee Dee and Jen and obviously Zach, um, they're, all, they're all so talented. I just feel honored to be on a show with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Despite the fact that you're paired out, is there any uh, characters that you would like, well, I mean, of course, you want to take away from them, but like, uh, let's say, if there was another character you would want to be on the show, who would it be? And who would you want to voice? Oh, on the show? Be? Yeah, on the show, yeah. Oh, on the show, okay. Um, well, I'm like, really feeling Aquamarine right now. Really? I love her. I love Aquamarine. Like, every time I watch an episode and she's in it, I'm like, I was like, oh man, she's so cool. I'd love to voice her. I mean, I don't think I could do as good of a job as her person does, but that's some, I think that's one that I would want to give like a. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. try, maybe. Right. We have time for one more question. With being in the voice acting, I've talked to a lot of voice actors from Funimation, Sentai Film Arts, and I know the difference between their booths. What's it like to be in the booth for Steven Universe? Is there a lot of joking around? Do you leave practical jokes for the other cast members like they do at some of the anime studios? We haven't done practical jokes, but that kind of plants a seed in my head. I think I might start doing that. I think that'd be really funny. Um, for uh, our scheduling wise, you know, um, they have to pack so much in, so we're actually layered. Um, when uh, I come in, like if, if you know, Michaela and, and uh, Steven, Zach is in there at 9, I'll come in at like 10, 15, and sometimes I just have like one pickup line, so sometimes it's so quick. Um, they have to like get me in the, book, uh, in the booth, and then, you know, Rebecca and Ken Osborne, our voice director along with Rebecca, they're kind of breaking down what's going on within the scene, um, and then they're like, and go, because they're trying to get so much done. There's so much overlap. Um, so it's mostly in the green room that we're uh, chit-chatting when, when we we're at we're the booth. We like to fool around a little bit, but we know time is of the essence. So we get back to work, but I'm going to start doing practical jokes on them. I think they're going to start hating me. I'm going to like... <laughs> no, we never hate you. Oh, come, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm so sorry. We have to cut it short. Um, thank you so much for coming. Oh my gosh, thanks so much for having me.